Hey, listen! <laughs> and welcome to the Fuzzy Loaf Podcast, where uh, two shitheads talk about what's going on in nerd and pop culture. I'm Scott. That's Matt. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I didn't want to rush it because last time you you're like that's, and then I was like Matt. You said, and right as you said Matt, and I was like, oh, fuck. we'll never get it down. It's yeah. fine someday. Anyway, so we were off last week because, well, honestly, there was nothing to talk about. In our minds, yeah, that we had anything to say at any certain length beside "oh, cool" or "eh, who cares?" Yeah, I have a feeling it's gonna kind of be like this. I keep repeating up until uh, Comic Con. Yeah, um, kind of a drought here. So. Yeah, yeah, we even kind of had to stretch it a little bit. This is like an accumulation of news from like the past two weeks, and a lot of it will be like, "Oh, I feel sort of like this." I don't really care, you know, but we'll get through it. Pretty much. Anyway, Matt, what did you want to talk about for? Let's start with the small potatoes, the casting news, uh, just because I feel like we're not going to have a ton to say about no. a lot of this. Which casting did you want to talk about? Let's talk about S- Superman being cast in Supergirl. Okay. Because this was the like the biggest thing when they moved over to the CW from the ABC that everybody's like, oh, we're going to get Superman. Well, it's going to be like the first two episodes of the season or something yeah. like that. So, what do you think of the casting of uh, Tyler Hochin as Superman? I reserve the right to for final judgment. I was a little thrown off. I feel like he just, what I've seen him in, I don't think he would make a good Superman, but once again, that doesn't mean that he's not the a good The only thing you've seen him in is, in, is Teen Wolf. Wolf in that show I, the is The only thing I've garbage. seen him in is Everybody Wants Some, and yeah. that's my favorite movie of the year so far, and he's one of the best parts of the movie. So I think if you saw that, you, yeah. it, you'd probably change your mind. Also, you don't watch Supergirl. Yeah, that, and that's the other thing. That's why I, I was like, I reserve the right, because... I, I, I'm you should check Supergirl really, out once season two starts on the CW. Yeah. I think I would like it better on CW. It wasn't bad on CBS. Mm. It had Martian Manhunter. It was it, it was a feel good show. It made you feel good. Yeah. Um, and they didn't have crazy dumb time travel rules like Legends Fucking of Tomorrow Legends and Flash. Of, oh God! If you're gonna do things in your universe, just even no matter how crazy they you are, you gotta have a rule. Stick set. to your yeah. rules. Yeah, like just, but they don't. They just do whatever they. They just do whatever they want, whenever they want. It drives me nuts. Yeah. But, okay. So. Okay, I have to ask you, though, because you said he's a great, or he's great and everybody wants him, but do you think he'll make a good Superman? I think he'll be fine, yeah. It is weird that they cast someone so young, an actor who's only, like. Maybe five, six years older than her, at most. I don't don't even think, yeah, I'm I'm sure they're almost the same I don't know, because I thought, okay, so when I was watching Everybody Wants Him, so Supergirl's husband is the main character in Everybody Wants Some, um, Blake Jenner. Oh, I didn't he, know she was married. Oh, yeah. Her husband is the main character in Everybody Wants Some. And uh, I was like, I was like, oh, dude looks, because she's 27. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, well, Mr. 30-year-old dude playing like an 18-year-old or whatever. And I looked him up and he's only, he's our age. He's 23. So she married younger? Yeah. I was like, oh, he just looks like he's 30. She's a cougar. So I was going to see how old Tyler um, Hoechlin is. Okay, he's 28. So he's playing Superman, and he's only a year older than Supergirl. But, but he's here's, supposed to be a good, like, at least 10 years older than here's her. Here's the thing. The whole timeline or like the whole timeline thing is all fucked anyways, because she left. She was older than him when she left. But, but then he was a, older than her yeah, when he... Yeah, I know. But, but now she's aged up. It's been 12 years since he found her, and he was already Superman yeah. When he found her, so I don't know. He's been. It's one of those things that I say all the time. From the age of twenty five to about the age of thirty five, you can kind you of can look kind the of, same. Yeah, it's like you could play on the high ends of almost forty, or you could play on the low. ends I mean, of I don't know. Look at that picture of him. He 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 kind of looks like a dude who could play in his mid thirties. Yeah, and he that seeing that I could see him playing Clark Kent. Like that looks like yeah, Clark, Clark, Clark Kent right Kent. there. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Which is like the big thing that Clark Kent's kind of a, a doofy, clumsy, not always. But Clark Kent's a completely different character. Yeah. Than Superman, in a sense. Okay, but I feel better about seeing that picture. I feel better. Yeah, I think I, everybody <laughs> wants some comes out on DVD this mm-hmm. week. 
please go check it out. I will. Because I think you'll love it. I think even Ashley will like it, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are we both love Days and Confused. Okay, so then you'll love this. Yeah. I haven't even seen Days and Confused. You have to see Days and Which is dumb. I need to see it. It's, I love Richard Linklater movies. It's one of those, the soundtrack alone is enough reason to watch the movie. Yeah. And there's so many actors that were in that movie before they, like, really hit their prime, like, became famous actors. And it's uh, it's such a great cast. It's such a good movie. And it's one of those movies where it feels so realistic. Like, it feels like high school. That's, it just, high school yeah. in the 70s. Everybody, 70s. everybody wants some is like yeah. that, too. Um, and it also, like, it does a good, like, dissection of masculinity. Yeah. Because it's, it follows these group of baseball players, like, for a college baseball players. So it follows all these boys and whatever. And it really, like, it's, it's just really good. You yeah. have to check it out. It's my number one movie of the year so far, so. All right. Oh. All right. That's, okay. Let's move on to the Spider-Man cast. Okay, so we have, has it been confirmed yet that Donald Glover is in, or is that still rumored? I don't think any of these are actually okay. confirmed, but they're so like, we'll, basically. We'll go forward with heavily supported rumors that uh, Donald Glover, uh, Martin Starr, and Logan Marshall Green will be in Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, I think Marsh or Logan Marshall Green was cast as the villain. Yeah, in a villainous role. Villainous role. Yeah. Said. Um, Martin Starr, if you don't know, is from Freaks uh, and Geeks, Freaks and Geeks, Silicon, Silicon Valley. Valley. Um, Donald Glover. I mean, Community, Ch- Childish, Childish Gambino. Gambino. Uh, Come got- on, did you see? Just a an, a tangent for a second. That he uh, deleted all of his tweets, and then tweeted out a link. To an app that's available on the Play Store and uh, and on the Apple Store, and it all it is is you click through and you're in like a galaxy that you can move around, and people think that his album is hidden somewhere in there, like you can click over to a bunch of stars and stuff, and people are flipping the fuck out. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> back to well, the, the, Donald, the Donald Glover thing is like the most interesting casting because there was a huge campaign for him to play Spider Man. A few years ago, back my thing just fell and hit my mic. Oh no! It's, it's all droopy. Fart, fart, fart. It's flaccid. Oh no! It's Game of Thrones. I don't watch Game of Thrones. Flaccid wieners. No. You oh. never what? You don't watch South Park either? Nope. Okay. Never That's mind. one thing you learn about me. I don't like Game of Thrones. I also don't like South Park. <laughs> I think South Park's stupid. It is stupid. That's what makes it great. No, it's it's stupid and it's not funny. It's just too stupid for me. And their political discourse I don't agree with, so whatever. Yeah. Bunch of libertarian nut jobs. Anyway, Donald Glover <laughs> Spider Man. I finally Revealing, got my fucking yeah. mic fixed and went on a little rant about how I don't like South Park. Um, and it, yeah, it's really cool. Everyone's like, He's the black guy. He's got to be playing Miles. I'm like, Donald Glover's 30 years old. Yeah, Miles He's not is playing supposed Miles. to be like a middle He's school, 13 high schooler. when yeah. he gets his powers. He's younger than Peter. Yeah. He's, if anything, he's playing like... I want to get. I would guess he's playing like uh, his teacher. That would be cool. Or like a Robbie Robertson at the Daily Bugle. Mm-hmm. Or somebody. But not... Pro- probably like more of a mentor. Could you imagine... No, no. Imagine what? Nothing. Never mind. I'm not going to go. <laughs> no, do it. <laughs> um, if he played J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> I don't I don't think he could pull it off. I'm just I saying. I still want Ice Cube for J. No, Jonah I know, Jameson. but could you imagine? <laughs> yeah. It would be interesting. I don't, yeah, I think Ice Cube is more in that vein of where he can be kind of like scary in your face, like just loud. Or P. Diddy. Did you, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Martin. Sorry, I have no idea who like, he would be cast as. Same with Logan Marshall Green. Like, I just don't. Logan Marshall Green would be. He, the way I, when I first saw, I saw a picture of the dude, I was like, could be Craven. That'd be pretty I think, cool. Yeah, I think because we're not gonna get like Doc Ock. We're not gonna get Green Goblin. Craven would be a good um, like more grounded villain. For yeah, because it's supposed to be a more grounded movie. Mm-hmm. It, Craven would be a more grounded bad guy. How do you feel about? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like how they're going to do this, um, like Martin Starr being his dad in like flashback. No, because he looks stay, dorky. They're, they're, they're going to stay away from the family thing. Okay, I'll believe it when I see it. Because every time they reboot Spider-Man, that's the same. 
They've only rebooted Spider-Man once. They didn't talk about his parents in the first one. They're not going to... They did it in the second one because I don't know why. They're probably going to stay away from it. Yeah. Because it's, it's pointless to talk about Peter. I'm just trying to think they, of who he, would pl- who he could play. Once again, maybe he plays a teacher. Maybe there's he's a teacher absolutely no way that he's J. Jonah Jameson. No. Um, maybe uh, Michael Keaton's playing J. Jonah Jameson. That'd be cool. I'd love well, that. I think, didn't he say he was out for the movie? No, he's back in. So... Maybe they were casting him as the villain, and he's like, "Fuck that! I don't want well, to be a villain." We've talked about Spider-Man a lot. How we said we're with this one, we're kind of just like, Do whatever yeah. happened has happened. Well, we I trust Marvel at this point. Um, yeah, they'll get it right, or at least good enough that it'll be entertaining. Like, like I always say, Marvel movies are not like masterpieces. They're not cinema gold, but they're entertaining, right. and they do right by the characters yeah. most of the time. Most of the time. All right. Um, what else did you want to get in? When do you want to talk about your E3 stuff? Do you want to say that for the end? or uh, We can talk about some of this other stuff first. Okay. Um, Ball Rats is a TV series? I am... What do you think of that? I'm all for this. I, mean, I it might not be a TV series. It might be like a stream thing. Well, and it might be like a 10 episode. It is going to be like 10 episodes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm all for it. I like... Uh, that Kevin Smith is he's doing weird shit but at the same time he's kind of returning somewhat to his roots he's just doing what he wants to do yeah. and that's I think the coolest part is he's just making things that he wants to see mm-hmm. that he wants to do and if other people like it that's cool yeah because he does them on like a small budget well and I was gonna say he's he's lot. got enough money and enough like comfort in his life that he it's kind of like it doesn't fucking matter he's doing this because he wants to not because he needs the money he wants to have fun yeah his daughter and um johnny depp's daughter wanted to be in a movie together and do it so they made they they just did it yeah and they had a blast doing it and i'm excited to see yoga holsters and mall rats is one of my favorite move kevin smith movies so yeah i i always bounce between that and dogma being my favorites dogma is nobody else really likes dogma that much but i love oh see i loved it um i grew up with it too so i was like yeah those movies were great because like kevin smith i think just has a great way of connecting with people at that right age (laughs) like it's it's made for teenagers and young 20 somethings it's not meant to be like super philosophical and all this shit but at the same time it's like not just dick and fart jokes like they do touch on deeper things through dick and fart jokes right right um so yeah i mean that's cool it's he apparently wanted to do it as a series after working on the flash and getting a kind of a yeah a taste for that world i'm like that's pretty cool that's yeah i'm glad he enjoyed doing that and that he's pursuing like tv stuff do we know if this is with the original cast or yeah no is... it's the same cast though okay um so this is for, like the, for the most for yeah. the most part Probably not Ben Affleck. Yeah. You know, but... You never know. Maybe. It'd be awesome he's, if he I was going to say, he's like good friends with cameo. Kevin Smith, so. Oh, yeah, he still would go and do Kevin Smith movies and yeah. stuff, so we'll see. If he's not too busy with Batman. Oh, God, yeah. So. Writing, directing, and starring in. Jesus Christ. And also, he's EP. on... They're basically, on like, relying Justice on Ben League Affleck now. to it's save like, their ass. Yes. <laughs> Whoa, oh, don't fall. Slipped. Jesus. Damn oh, chair. we didn't talk about this either. Uh, Justice League... Officially titled Justice League. Oh, I was I was like, this is the most this is the biggest non-story. Yeah, I was like, people were like, you'll never believe what Justice League's title is, and I was like, oh man, it's gonna be some long stupid thing like the Dawn of Just or Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Nope, it was fucking Justice League. Sorry, that just reminded me of it. It's so stupid. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Kevin Smith, Mallrats, pretty good. Yep. Um, all right. I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, so, th- they released some Ghostbusters TV spots online yeah. and stuff this week, and uh, one of them showed the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man in it, and of course, there's like fan outrage, you know, about it. It's like, all right. I just wanted to say with this is, with anyone who has anything to say about it being in the movie. First of all, peop- this, the way these fans, with the, especially with this movie, are, if it wasn't in the movie, they'd flip out. If it is in the movie, they'll flip out. Yeah. It's, it's a no-win situation. 
So they just went and put him in the movie, and I think that's totally fine. Some people say they don't. They say they shouldn't be in the movie, or whatever. And it's like it's it's a no win for those guys making the movie. Yeah. So I want to know what you thought about it. I agree. It's one of those things. They're not going to be able to please everybody. It's very clear that the people that are diehard fans of the originals are not going to be fans of this movie, and they wouldn't have been no matter what they did. So at this point, they're probably just looking to reach the like wider audience that they'll be able to hit by basically having the cast of uh, like the female stars from SNL and then some of Bridesmaids. You know what I mean? Like They're already going to have a built-in following from that and there's going to be a ton of people that are going to see the movie like just general people that go to see movies anyways because they know oh ghostbusters i remember seeing that when i was a kid and there's a new one and it looks kind of funny well and then i went and saw um uh finding dory yesterday and they played a ghostbusters trailer before yeah and when i walked out of the theater i could hear kids talking about how they wanted to go see the new ghostbusters movie and stuff i was like well yeah there's a ton of kids that don't know much about anything. Maybe I haven't even seen this 30 plus year old movie. Yeah. So, yeah, the Ghostbusters looks interesting to them. They don't care if Stay Puffs in it or not. It's it's these, you know, all these old guys who are like, oh, whatever. It's dumb. And I'm sick of, I'm sick of talking about Ghostbusters. Because I'm sick of everyone whining about it. Yeah. <clears throat> but, okay. Um, do you want to talk about this leaked Marvel phase? Yeah, I'll pull that up. Whatever right thing. Now. Okay. I don't. You you said something, and I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. This happened about. four days ago. Uh, it was on Latino Review, and I think it was passed around a few other places. So this is these are rumors. What the slate four and five are going to be? Um, four and five. Four and five. Um, so, if you don't remember, before Marvel announced what uh, slate or phase three, I keep saying slate. Um, Latino Review also pushed one of these out, and it was pretty on besides Spider-Man. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. But without further ado, May 1st, 2020, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Okay, I'm going to write these down yeah. as you go. Um, May you 1, 2020. Um, then July 10th, 2020. So that's only two months later. Jesus. Spider-Man Coming of Age. Coming of Age? Yeah. That's a dumb title. I mean, it, it wouldn't but be Homecoming was also fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> um, November of the same year. Jesus. Doctor Strange 2. Okay. Then the all these, the next four are 2021. So we've got in March, Black Widow. What? In May... In humans, in yeah. July, Jesus Christ, Black Panther two. That was July. Yeah, July. Jesus, they're cramming these things. November, Ant Man three. Okay. Uh, February of the next year, so f- February of twenty twenty, we have the Winter Soldier. This doesn't sound that right. That doesn't sound... that Well, and they may mean Bucky. I don't know. That yeah, does seem weird because they also they had Captain, Captain America, America Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. You can't yeah. have a f- just Winter Soldier movie. That'd be... Uh, okay. May of that year, we have The New Avengers. Wait, this is this is 2022? 2022, Jesus yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. New Avengers? Yep. Then July 8th, you'll fucking love this. Nova. A full Nova movie mm-hmm. before other things. We'll get to some other stuff. Okay. Uh, November fourth of twenty twenty, we have Captain Marvel two. It's a, quite a while. Well, I guess that doesn't come out till like twenty nineteen. Yeah, now, I think. Yeah. So um, that was November of twenty twenty two. Yep, and we have four more movies to finish off. Oh my off. god, no! Twenty twenty three. This yeah. is. St- getting stupid i had to turn the page i ran out of room okay uh, what so march century slash spider woman okay oh, hold up <laughs> stop for a second because is this a it's either century or spider woman yeah my guess is they're because hearing whispers of why what they're would you debating because those are two characters you would never team up 
I'm assuming it. They mean another female hero, and those are the two they're batting around. Well, Sentry's not a female hero. Or I guess he's their Spider Superman. Appear. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, that does seem okay. Never mind. Uh, May of that year, Inhumans two. It's okay. Then July of that year, Spider Man three. Jesus Christ. Then November of that year, Doctor Strange three. <laughs> So they're going to be doing four movies a year. That's what they're. That's what this is shooting for. Um, they're going to have to really differentiate these movies in like genre, you know, because be like superhero plus another genre. Otherwise, this is going to get really boring. All right. Yeah. What else do you got for? That's me? it. That was. That's, that's, that's the end of it. Yeah, it's the end of it. This is garbage, dude. I'm just going to. I'm flat out going to say it. I love Marvel movies. I don't like this lineup. I think this doesn't seem interesting to me. Yeah, there's there's a few things. This is probably very early, very early talks and not like cemented. My guess is that no, some of these things Nova are going to changed. Dumb. Yeah, and uh, I'm guessing what's going to happen in between. We're, they're going to get Fantastic Four, and there's going to be a Fantastic Four thing in here. Yeah, my guess is they're okay with the characters we have available, and what we want to do as we want to create another Avengers. Like I said, I know that we know there's 100% chance that they're going to do a new Avengers movie of some kind. It might not be titled that way, but it's going to be a new cast for the Avengers because they're going to, uh, rotate out the old a new guard. Avengers would be great. Cause, but it'd be even better if they had Wolverine and the thing. Cause yeah. those guys were part of the new Avengers. It, I can see them getting the thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, Captain Marvel leads the new Avengers. Yeah. And, like you said, there's a lot of this that I look at and it's like, no, okay. The Winter Soldier, they're not going to do the Winter Soldier when they had Captain America, the Winter Soldier. They're not. Um, they might do like uh, Bucky taking over as Captain America and they might have to think of a way to uniquely title that. And that might just be what they mean by the Winter Soldier. I mean, um, okay, we've got three Doctor Strange movies. Where's my Miss Marvel movie? Yeah. Well... They probably want to do Captain Marvel for a little while before getting to Miss Marvel. Like I said with Spider-Man, they're going to do Spider-Man before they get to Miles Morales Spider-Man. I would love to see a movie with um, the Sam Alexander Nova, Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, and Miles Morales Spider-Man. Yeah. All three of them together just being kids super... Like Like I said, they're missing a huge opportunity to... What they should be doing with this next phase is making the Avengers look like it does currently in the comics. Yes. Because that would draw kids in they to should, be like, they oh, I'm going to go back and read all should, of they should from Secret bring Wars. They should it a little yeah. closer to what it is now. Yeah. And I think right. they're missing that huge opportunity to do that. Like, if they were really are going to do, in May 2020, the new Avengers movie, it would have been a great time to actually do, like, the all-new, all-different Whereas Avengers. Whereas, in the past, they have turned made the comics more like the movies. Yeah. Maybe fear the movies a little bit more towards the comics this time change it up a little bit because I like the, the current Avengers cast of the main Avengers mm-hmm. it's really good you've got the Jane Foster Thor uh, Captain Falcon Iron Man which they'd probably get rid of which is fine Miss Marvel Vision Spider-Man and Nova yeah it's a good good lineup so and it's there's a quite a few young like younger people which is good because I think what they're running into now is, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is not getting any younger. No. He's not going to be able to do these movies for Unless another 10, 15 that, years. Like, face. Yeah. Thing. That, oh, that, God. That part of the movie was so weird because I was like, what? It looked weird at first, but then when you saw him and he was, like, standing still, you're yeah. kind of like, oh, I was like, what did witchcraft? It helped but, because he was yeah. doing movies at that time. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, there's a lot of this I don't buy. Well, the thing is, because I'm not really, I'm not even interested in Doctor Strange, the first one, all that much. We'll Some see. People are. I'm interested because I want to see what they a do with it. A Black Widow but. movie. I know people really want it. I'm not really, I've never really liked Black Widow as a character a whole lot. Even the comics, I'd rather, Spider-Woman sounds great. My thing Sentry could be really cool, but yeah. I also like Spider-Woman. My thing with the Black Widow movie is I don't know how they would be able to do it without pushing the barrier really hard from PG-13 to, like, and right R on the edge of R. Because, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of her story. I mean, it is about killing, and it is about, like, 
her being an assassin and being like kid or like for lack of better words like held against her will and, and forced into being uh, yeah so, KGB assassin yeah so it's like I don't know how you tell that story and do it justice without it being R or close to R like as yeah. close to R as you can get Ant-Man 3 I'm sure would be another Ant-Man and the Wasp yeah because you at this point if you're introducing a Wasp in the second one mm-hmm. they have they have to be a pair their team forever yeah. That's just how they are. Black um, Panther 2. Yeah. But once again, it's one of those with Doctor Strange. I'm very interested in Black Panther 1. I don't know much about their character or like his character or his stories or his villains to like I have to he, see how, know that he has I have to see how the first Black worth. Panther and the first Doctor Strange turn out for me to really yeah. determine how I feel about this list. Inhumans, I, I don't think we need an Inhumans movie. I just don't think... I f- I still think um, they're going to deliver on it because they said they would. I think Inhumans would be better as like a Game of Thrones type TV series. That would be fucking rad. Because they're, they're, they're basically like... A, they're a royal family yeah. of super-powered beings. It'd be... They've got Black Bolt as the king, Medusa as the queen. They're always... Medusa's always sleeping with someone else. There's always all this crazy stuff going on. There's people trying to go after the throne. It'd be a really cool like series more than it would be a movie I think yeah so and a Nova movie is just I have he's got his fans but I don't think Nova's a big enough character to have a movie to himself yeah and one thing that like Avengers did really well with Avengers Age of Ultron is they introduced Scarlet Witch and the Vision in those movies instead of them getting I would love a Scarlet movies. Witch and Vision movie yeah but what I mean is like they did the right thing there instead of having a standalone movie Introducing the Vision or introducing Scarlet Witch. Well, they have already introduced to the Nova Corps mm-hmm. in Guardians of the Galaxy. So I think that we would... I don't know, maybe they'll Guardians introduce of the Galaxy Nova three in Guardians or, of the Galaxy. Or two. Two yeah. or three or something. Because yeah. he has fucked around with those guys. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, I it's don't also know if I fully way too early to tell. 2020 is still four years away. And there's a lot that could change. So even if this was stuff that they were talking about right now, I mean, that's... It It could change. They've got shit out here till, what is it, 2023? 2023 that's yeah. eight, seven years from now? I yeah. Mean, and there's a lot of people... But I'm going to be 30 A lot of people have said... Then. Oh, God, don't even. Don't even, man. Oh, that's scary. So, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, mortality. All right, all right, we need to move on to a different story. Over. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, Matt, talk about E3. All right, okay. So, for anybody that's fans of video games, I think this E3 was pretty good. We got a lot of game announcements, um, a lot of release dates for games that we've been hoping for. Uh, if you like horror, Resident Evil has been announced. Resident Evil 7 is coming out in January. Um, Sony's pref- press conference was, in my opinion, the best because they showed the most games that I was interested in. But Xbox, uh, or Microsoft, rather showed off their new console which um they have the xbox one s is coming august it's going to be 300 starting at 300 dollars. it can output to 4k but not video games just movies which is kind of dumb and then next year they already announced this far ahead that they're uh planning on releasing what they're calling project scorpio which is basically just going to be a pc or like an xbox that you can swap out graphics cards from what it sounds like so a PC. So yeah. So basically, you buy one console and you can upgrade the specs in them versus having to buy a new console every four years. So now. a PC. Basically, yeah. Okay. Well. Well, then that was their other thing. Is Microsoft is pushing really hard. Anything you buy on Xbox starting this fall will be playable on Xbox or Windows 10, and you buy one copy and it's playable on both. That seems so weird to me. Well, Sony as a non-gamer, <clears throat> that seems really strange. Sony's already doing that with. Uh, like their PS3 and Vita games. If you buy a game on PS4 and it's for PS3 or Vita, yeah. then you get the copy free. So right. they're already doing that. Um, it is weird because they're cannibalizing a lot of potential sales, but I think they're doing it because they're making the switch to this different console idea. But right. now we talk about some uh, Nintendo. So uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild is what it's called. Um, Into the Wild. 
Yeah. I'm just going to call it <clears throat> Zelda Into the Wild. So a lot of people are saying it looks really cool. And I, well, I think it's a step in the right direction. I think because they're releasing it on the Wii U as well, that it, it's kind of being held back. The graphics don't look great. Um, from what I heard, there's no uh, there's no NPCs to interact with in the game. There's just enemies and Link. <clears throat> I think getting rid of the, the Linkle, Linkle kit option is really dumb. Yeah, and then the other thing is the fucking the rumored NX controller that we saw Nintendo patent. Oh, it's so last fucking year. stupid! It looks like a horseshoe. It's a horseshoe that you hold on. I don't understand that you hold on to. That's. Um, but Link is seen with multiple items in the game he is wielding something that looks exactly like that. So it's like, it's almost guaranteed that even if it would be really dumb if they did this, but even if it was only a controller for that game, Ugh, that'd be so dumb. But they did say you can use the Wii GamePad and the GamePad Plus or whatever, GamePad Pro. I don't know what the difference is. I've never heard of a GamePad Pro. It might not be. It might be the pro controller. I'm not sure what they're referring to. Pro controller is the yeah, the, the little one, like the yeah, actual controller. Yeah, yeah, the one that looks like a real. Yep. The basically the Wii U Pro controller is um like the like the best controller I've ever used ever. Isn't it based on a GameCube controller? Kind of. Um, it's just so simple. It's got the two sticks here, mm -hmm. and then uh like a D, and then a D pad, mm -hmm. and then A B X Y. Yeah. And then left right. It's just like the most simple controller ever that's just perfect yeah and it lasts 80 hours that's so yeah it in. so i would imagine most people are going to be playing it on the gamepad or the pro controller um yeah. but if this new controller is a thing that looks really fucking stupid also to finish off this thing spider-man the video game looks it's being made it's being it's, made it's, it's being made we and have no idea when it's coming out uh, it looks Nah, it's on. really early. It's the suit looks so bad. Come on, yeah, All I that don't. Weird white. This is the only thing that would make sense is if that's actually going to be his suit in the movie. Like, I don't know why they would do that weird this of a movie, suit. This game's not tied into the movie. I know, but I I have a feeling that they wouldn't do a weird suit unless it was going to be because you why could just people, I don't you would just do a normal suit, wouldn't you? Like, well, I would just do the fucking. Let me get into my comic nerd mode yeah. for a second. Why do people keep thinking we need to change Spider-Man's suit? He's got... It's so simple and so, like, fine. You don't need to change it. It's like Superman. Yeah. In the comics and everything, too. Everyone's like, we got to change in Superman's suit. Why? He's had the same suit for the past 75 years. Let's just, like... I mean, it has changed slightly, but yeah. it's always remained basically the same. Like, let's just keep those same that, but elements. That's you don't need to change it up so it, much. That's why I'm leaning towards thinking that it's tied into the suit in the movie. There's because there, why would you do it? It looks like no other suit I've ever seen for Spider-Man. Never. Spider-Man doesn't have white on that. Like yeah. That. But anyways, I think the game will be good because Insomniac is is really good at making games. Yeah. And um, Sunset Overdrive had a really good movement system. And a lot of people have been making the analogy that the last good Spider-Man game was made by Neversoft, who made Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Oh. So, like, the whole idea of keeping momentum and that kind of stuff plays into making a game that feels the fun as Spider-Man. The physics of a Spider-Man game yeah. are really going to matter. Um, but like I said, this is really, really early. I would not be surprised if the game ends up looking way different, if his suit looks different, if, oh, yeah. like, all this stuff, because we're probably not going to get this game until 2018, 2019. When's the Spider-Man movie coming out? Next year. Okay. Yeah, uh, not in time for they that. They should be filming, like, now. Yeah. So if it comes out next year. So. But, also, it's PlayStation 4 exclusive. Oh. I don't have a PS4. Yeah. I thought about getting one for cheap, because they, they're going down in price now. I think they're, like, 250 now. They might even be 199 it's Or heading bad. that way. Yeah. And it, it's really good. It plays Blu-ray. Blu yeah. yeah. I don't play video games, though, so I don't know if it's There's really some games that, that I think you would... There are. My friend has a PS4. Yeah. I probably play Rocket League a lot. <clears throat> oh fuck yeah, Rocket League is great. Uh, have you tried? Have you seen played the hockey version? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I like the hockey. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not. A, I'm not a gamer, so I can't really even comment on any of the yeah. E3 stuff. Like I said before, we started the podcast. A lot of it that was shown that was really cool is still like we don't have a date for this. So it's probably 2018, 2019 at the earliest. So it's like oh, this is really cool, but not a lot is coming out. The PSVR is coming out this year. It's $400, $400 though. Um, That's still cheaper. 
<laughs> cheaper, <laughs> yeah, cheaper than Oculus or yeah. Vive. Um, and their whole thing is it has a separate processor in the headset so that it's not relying as heavily on the PS4. So the PS4 runs like the game side, the VR headset handles like actually upscaling it and all that stuff to VR. Um, it'll be good, I assume, hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, there's not a, there was not a ton that came out of E3 that was super wowing. Yeah, I, I think, uh, did you have anything else to get to before we do the no. music minute? We got the music, yeah. That's it. All right, now uh, for the music minute this week, I want to talk about, uh, I was going to talk about this last week because it actually came out last week, but it's Diarrhea Planet's new album, Turn to Gold. Um, this is their third full-length album. They put out a few EPs in the past few years. Um, they also just did their first ever uh, TV appearance on Late Night with <laughs> Seth Meyers, where they played uh, It Ain't a Sin to Win, uh, which I recommend checking out. Because the album itself, it's all right. I, say, I still say check it out, give it a listen. Yeah. Um, but di- the thing with Diarrhea Planet is they are a hell of a live performance band. And the best part about them putting out a new album means a new tour. Mm-hmm. And they're definitely a band worth checking out live. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to talk about them. This yeah. Week. You listened to the album. What did you think of it? Uh, I felt pretty similar uh, where a lot of their EPs I thought were better or just like had. I, li- I really liked Aliens in the Outfield mm-hmm. EP a lot. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a bad album <clears throat> but I felt like a lot of these songs just didn't feel as inspired as they used to right um, they kind of felt like well we need to put out an album so yeah and I know a lot they wanted to give a lot of the people in the band that hadn't written before an opportunity to like write songs so that could also be it too where you have people that have written pretty much everything up until this point and then there's like all the songs are written by different people on this album like um, they each got a shot at at least one song. Right. So that could be it too. They also added another guitarist and a drummer, if I remember correctly. And no, they still have the same number of guitar players. Are you sure? Yep. Because I, I saw them on that. the KEXP live thing, and I swear, I know they have a new drummer. Four guitarists, one bass player, and a drummer. Jesus Christ. That's what, that's what they always have. When you see them on Seth Meyers, you've got the drummer in the back. I, they, I, I did notice they had a different drummer. Yeah. They had the drummer in the back. With a bass player, like, kind of staying next to him, and then all four guitarists in a row. Yeah. Front. Um, no, they're, it's definitely, like, give the album a listen to, but really I wanted to, because this album came out, it gave me a chance to highlight the band. Yeah. And I wanted to just say, check out Diary of Planet as a whole, and if you can, go see them live. Yeah. Their shows are usually pretty cheap. I think the most I've paid for one of their shows is 15 bucks, and it's worth it. Yeah. It's just worth it. They put on a hell of a live performance. The last time I saw them, their, I don't want to say lead guitarist, but he's kind of their lead, yeah. was playing their final song, Hanging Upside Down by the Rafters. Fuck yeah. Uh, it's just shredding really hard, and it was great. Because he also, he plays like his fingers yeah. more than he plays with a pick, so, and he's still shredding, so... Uh, yeah, I just wanted to use that their album release of Turn to Gold to highlight Diarrhea Planet and say, go check them out. <laughs> so, um, I believe that's it. Yeah, that's for it. For this week. All right, well, thanks for hanging in there with us in this kind of a shitstorm of a show. Yeah. But it happened. We did it. We did it. We'll see what happens next week. Uh, hopefully more news. Hopefully something. Yeah. To talk about. Cause goddamn. Yeah. We we're really stretching here. Well, I mean, with some of this stuff. Yeah. Casting's hard to talk about. It is because either it's you like, either you're all for it or you're against it or you don't give a shit. Because if the actor's a good actor, you don't really care. Yeah. You know, like all like these guys, it's like oh, they're all good actors, so okay. That's fine. All right. Anyway. Um. You can find me online at Scotty Boy, S C O T T Y, B W O four Ys. That's Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, whatever you fucking want. Matt, you can find me on the interwebs at Hagnerd, H A G N E R D. That's uh, all the places Scott listed, and probably everywhere else in the world. 
So just search. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Fuzzy Loaf. If you're listening to this on iTunes, you can find us on YouTube and subscribe there. If you're listening to this on YouTube, you can find us on iTunes and subscribe there. Just search Fuzzy Loaf. It's, it's quite easy to do. Even my mom can do it. So you guys mom have no can excuse. Do it? My mom yeah. can't. I had to show her how to do it. My mom, so doesn't, <laughs> my mom doesn't know what a podcast is. Oh, my mom didn't either. Whenever my mom asks, she's like, are you doing that broadcast today? And I'm like... Uh, it's Forget fantastic. It. Anyway, that's it for us. I was going to say something, but I forgot. So, it wasn't important. We'll smell you later.